Hey, we are sitting here with John Lawless from Bluegrass Today, who uh, I have nothing but the most respect for. been a huge fan, and it's uh, more than a pleasure to be able to come here to the IBMA 2019 and... Um, Hang out with you in the in the press room and uh, and and watch how watch how this is supposed to get done. So that's kind of cool. But anyway, welcome and uh, tell tell us um, you know how did it all start out? Uh, you, uh, where did it begin that you've uh, dedicated your life and uh, blood to uh, to bluegrass? Well, it started with uh, with me wanting to be part of bluegrass. I discovered it really when I was just a kid, like just out of high, or I guess in high school. And I wanted to be a part of it. And so I learned to play banjo and I worked and worked and worked, but there was always 10 or 20 guys who did it better than me. And I, I tried to be a performer and I did it professionally for a number of years, but I think it really clicked for me that it wasn't gonna happen when I got my first gig with a touring band. And after a few months with them, they met Sammy Sheeler <laughs> and then realized they didn't need me anymore. <laughs> and it started to click for me that uh, performing wasn't going to be it. So I looked for other ways to be involved and, and make a living in the music. And I, I ran a company for many years called Accutab, which was uh, transcriptions of the instrumental solos on top bluegrass records so guys learning to play would get the books to learn with the records they already had so you you transcribed it correct so they would to what to any instrument you were just taking the notes what they are well more i mean the company name accutab t-a-b mm -hmm. from tablature right so yeah. i would the first one we did was for sammy sheeler and we did the transcriptions of the lonesome river bands uh, carrying the Tradition album and the one after that, I forget the name of it. Um, and people, I mean, I didn't know if people would want it or not. So when you do it, like, how do you, like, do you have a whole editing team double checking that you do it right? <laughs> no, or? it was me. <laughs> yeah, so what are you taking it from the album? That yeah, I'd listen to the record. And of course, there's software to slow it down and listen. And right. I've been played and taught banjo for years. I couldn't have done it on the record like Sammy does, but I could listen to it and right. and figure out what he was doing. Then I'd get with him and check and no, I did it this way or whatever. And uh, we, then we expanded and did mandolin and guitar and, uh, and we did a dobro book for, for Rob Ikes and then gradually switched into video and did instructional videos until YouTube became mammoth and now there's a hundred thousand people showing you how to play banjo right. <laughs> on the yeah. internet yeah. and just by chance the, uh, the fellow that was my partner uh, doing the video a fellow named Brant Skillahan, he lives down in, around Charlotte, I think now, but he, he decided to get out of the video business and go into the ministry. So suddenly, you know, my thing was no longer a thing because I couldn't, you know, I didn't have a studio, I couldn't shoot the video or do the editing. But Brant and I had developed an interest the last few years. He was still, you know, living down near where I do in Southwest Virginia. And you may remember this, the word blog became the coolest thing, right? Everybody has to have a blog. And he and I were joking, we would sit while we were working on video and talk about what we had read on the blogs. And he liked, we liked to read uh, blogs dedicated to uh, religion and to politics. And again, you may recall in 2004, all the news people were saying, this is the year of the blog. The blog will impact the election for the first time. And we used to joke, Brantz and I, about, well, we'd like to have a blog. And one day he just said, you know what, we could have a blog. Because he had investigated the software and figured out how to do it. So we started a company called The Bluegrass Blog. And it was fairly primitive by, you know, the standards of Bluegrass today. but. But we wrote about things, stuff, you know, rumors we would hear from, 
you know, from other artists. Were, were you uh, an English major? Or? No, but my mom was an English teacher. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I and you knew how to do it properly. I knew how to I knew how to write, and I had always been interested in writing. I had written for local publications where I grew up in Norfolk, Virginia. And uh, my mom was still alive at the time, so I could call her and say, does a comma go here or a semicolon? And I was educated by uh, the Sisters of Charity in Norfolk at, uh, at a uh, Catholic school. And I learned English by ear the way I learned music. In other words, I could say a sentence out loud and just know whether that the tenses were agreeing and I had the right syntax. So I was lucky in that regard that I got that kind of education. Um, anyway, we wrote the Bluegrass blog for many years and I you know, just started calling a few people. And I knew people in the industry and I called uh, and asked, well, you know, would you be interested in advertising on this thing? And we found people right away. And we didn't make a great deal of money. It was a side thing for us at the time. But, but people enjoyed it because we could do it today. If I heard a rumor today, it was published online today. And we didn't have to wait 30 days for a magazine or a news something to come out. Well, just as my friend Brantz told me that he was done uh, doing this and was moving away, Terry Hurd called me, who uh, Terry's already well known as a uh, radio syndicator all over the country. And I had known Terry as well through the business, and he said, you know what, I'm going to start a new Bluegrass website, and would you like to be involved? And he had this vision for Bluegrass Today being a, you know, of course, just think of the name, Bluegrass Today, it's almost USA Today, right? You know, it's yeah. the, uh, the popular voice of Bluegrass, so to speak. And he had a vision for it, and he and I uh, put a business plan together, and uh, you know, formed a company and and we launched Bluegrass Today uh, eight years ago this week. Our first wow. week was at Bluegrass Today in two thousand. I mean, at IBMA at two thousand eleven. Wow! I, oh. And we we were able to put a team together. We you know had to invest some money in development and graphics and all this kind of stuff. But we. We intended to do it professionally from the start. And now we've got probably a half dozen journalists that write for us, and a number of photographers, and uh, I mean, the cool thing about an online publication, it doesn't matter where they are. Right, yeah. We've got a guy in England that writes for us regularly. Which is kind of cool, because when something's going on in England, Absolutely. you got there's there a guy. Right, yeah. But what about uh, the business side of, uh, you said you were selling uh, ad space, you know, right. uh, sponsors? Uh, uh, yeah, ad. we'll see. Are you, still, are you the one still doing no, it now? No, no, this seen? is the perfect part about this, is that that was Terry's business. He uh -huh. is good at that. And that was the plan all along, was that I would do the content, he would handle the marketing. And, you know, I you know how some people can pick up a phone and call somebody they've never met and ask them for money? Yeah. I can't do that. Right. So when they say no, I just, I'm crushed. That's what Terry's good at. Yeah. And he's very good at it. And he had been doing it with his radio network for years, uh, Bluegrass Radio Network for, a, what's his show, Into the Blue. And it's now a three-hour show syndicated, you know, Bluegrass syndicated, I think, on 130-some uh, stations around the country. So he's good at that. I'm comfortable with the writing, and uh, it was a perfect blend of expertise and interest. And he's worked very hard at it, and he keeps, I mean, we're typically always sold out. You know, the ads are, I mean, people call in advance and say, hey, we got a new record coming out in right, yeah. November. Will you have some, save some space for us? But, um, the great thing for me as the writer is in the digital world, you're not limited, you know, by column inches or right, words, right, right, you know, right. and of course, Bondus always will ask, well, what's your word count? I said, I don't care. <laughs> you know, yeah, write as much as you need or as little to I, tell the I, story. I like on uh, Bluegrass Today, 
the subscription aspect to it. For the newsletter. Yeah. You're right. So I'm going through my mail on uh, digitally, uh -huh. and and it's like uh, I know there's something exciting on the other end of that because you know I just got it's like a notification saying right. hey you know here's the news today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is really cool and it's easy to get around too. Yeah, I and I could catch a I could catch uh, all the stuff that I missed because I'm working. Yeah, because I'm doing something else, right. whatever, and I've been out of it, and I could, you know, just sort of, sort of like the way people binge watch something, I could catch up right, on Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, I think we've got, I'm not sure of the numbers, but I think about 20,000 people now signed up for that newsletter every day. That's good. And that's, that's. That helps the sales In the bluegrass the, uh, world. Ad, yeah, that's an yeah. impressive number in the bluegrass world. If, sure. it, if it was ESPN, they'd sniff at 20,000 people, but. Uh, yeah, it feels very good, and it's it's funny because you know I've done so many things in my life. Like anybody determined to stay in music, you, you do whatever you can find yeah. to stay close to it. And just by the freakest of chances, when this opportunity came along, everything had lined up just right. Yeah. You know, I had a little bit of cash that came from my parents' estate, and uh, I had the the expertise and understanding from having done it on a smaller scale for several years, and it just fell right into place. We, we should start a uh, uh, a little uh, article about uh, all the people who started out in the banjo and then <laughs> took a different route. <laughs> well, we were, I've been talking with a lot of people about that this week because it's very true. If people start off with the, the drive to pursue the music yeah. in whatever form, and it's, it's, it's very much like sports in that it tells you whether you're good enough. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, it becomes pretty obvious. I, I don't while. know that it, I don't know that it's good enough like from talent wise, because there's so many people that are beyond talented, right. but there's so much right. more to it you, than right. being talented. You've got to be yeah. willing to live the life. And, and lucky in a lot of ways too. Well, sure. Because it's at the right place at the right time happens. But talent is a big part of it. You but know, it's the prerequisite. Yes, it's the it's starting the prerequisite. Point. But you watch that if you follow youth sports, which I've always enjoyed. You see a kid at 13, and he is so much better than every other kid, better than kids that are 19 or 20. And if he keeps being the best, eventually he's a top professional athlete. Right. But in many cases. It'll be that this kid just was advanced for that age. And when he gets up with all the other 20-year-olds, they're better than he is. And you don't know until you try. Sure. But also there's other aspects because when you're the best kid at something, people are fawning over you. Right. Suddenly uh, it's easy to go down the wrong road. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, seen a lot, I've seen that happen a lot of times with both boys and girls in the industry yeah. there's incentives that the business side of the music business present that are not always healthy right. and uh, it's very easy at 18 or 19 to think I'm gonna be a star yeah and most well, often you're not it's the same with sports you yes. see you know kids coming and all this money all of a sudden yeah, yeah they don't know what to do with it it's yeah. very sad I, 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 I the, maybe a good thing is probably a bad thing at the same time. Bluegrass doesn't offer enough money to, to ruin young people. Yeah, well, that's true. But with, with Bluegrass today, uh, I kind of notice what I, what I like about it also is it's, it's mostly uh, it's good news. It's happy news. It's We focus on yeah. that. Uh, the yeah. worst part of my job is when I have to write an obituary. Right. Well, that's part of it. But right. that is yeah. part of the news. Yeah. I can't get away from it. But it's great. You know, when I, my favorite story this month was writing about Phil Ledbetter having beaten cancer for the fifth well, time. Well, when he said that last night, I, I don't know, there was a dry no, eye in the mine house. Mine wasn't. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, and what, what, is there a nicer guy in this music than wait, Phil? Five times. Yeah, like, that's that, that's, a, that's a stunning. small club. That's a... And, and he was throw, he already threw the towel in, he said. Yeah. They are, and who wouldn't? Right. Uh, yeah, I had a, a very close friend in Alabama that passed yesterday from cancer. And, sorry to hear that. Well, you know, and he was ready. He and his wife had talked and prepared. You know, I'm, 
it happens. Yeah. Yeah. And but Phil managed to beat it. So yeah. you know, as we say yeah. in the South, bless his heart. Yeah, indeed, indeed. But I love the idea, though, that everything is, is focused on happy stuff. Like, I have no interest for Backstage View to, right, gossip. to do anything other than promotional and help that's out our, the... That's our know. attitude. And in yeah. fact, if we get an album that we don't that we feel like we would have to critique negatively, we just don't review it. Right, yeah. You know, and many times, especially, again, with young bands, I'll listen to one and go, maybe next time. But the tough part now, that being said, the tough part is now, uh, if anyone listens to this interview and, uh, yeah, and don't you don't play you, it, they're going to think you don't like it. Well, that's well, not necessarily not the case. Not necessarily yeah, the case. Yeah. Sometimes it's a bad mix, a bad, yeah. I'm sorry, a bad match. Yeah. It's not really bluegrass or it's too far away from bluegrass. But sometimes I know it's true that a friend of mine was visiting with me and I work from home. And he saw a stack of unopened packages, you know, mail envelopes from people that were sending records. And uh, he said, wow, that's somebody's hopes and dreams right there in that pile. Yeah. And I know that's true, yeah. but, uh, but we get three or four every day. Wow. So I, I listen. And sometimes the thought is just, these guys have got something cool going on here, but it's not ready yet. But also, but, but also um, you, you are human, and if you listen to something today uh, and it, you're not having a good day, it's going to kind of have an effect on that. And It's you, very true. So, All those things have an impact. And, and you, it's subjective either way. Like, your favorite... Uh, your favorite food is probably different than my favorite yeah, food. Right, you know? exactly. So. Well, I think of a real good example is there's a group, um, they're in Nashville now, called the Band of Kelly. I don't yeah, know if you've seen yeah. them. No, I do. I remember, I think we spoke about this last yeah. time, but yeah, keep going. I, they, they had sent me a record maybe as much as five years ago, and they were all kids. Yeah. And Victoria had not developed into the singer that she is now, but you could tell there's something there special here. Yeah. And their older brother was still very involved in the group. Okay. And now the focus has shifted. But anyway, I remember when that record came out and their mom was their publicist. Yeah. And she reached out to me about it and I told her, I see a lot here, but it's not there yet. I don't want to write something negative or even a little pat on the head kind of thing. I want to wait until you guys have something. Sure. And they, they're a different band, though, now than what yes, they were they're then. they're a very different band. The brother not being in it, uh, the everyone else growing, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, physically as well as, uh, as as musicians. But but what, they do that uh, cover tune that she sings. Uh, Aretha Franklin? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That wow is, is one exactly. to write home about. That and, is uh, well worth But checking. the great thing is, once they had all that I wrote about them a lot yeah yeah and have enjoyed getting to know them I think Victoria Kelly is a superstar she yeah. doesn't know it yet but she's right. going to be I hope she stays in bluegrass because she could go to the voice yeah. or one of those things and just snap it up sure. and and her siblings uh, yes, also are pretty you know uh, yeah they're worthy. All good. yeah pretty worthy so I mean they the point is you can see the if I had done a first review of them and kind of poo-pooed it a little bit, I mean, it wouldn't have destroyed them, but it wouldn't have helped them any. I'd rather right, wait right. until now it's all there and tell everybody, wow, check this out. Yeah. So you still clearly have the passion that you had from the beginning. Yeah, and now, but now it's, a pa it's more of a missionary zeal for bluegrass, right? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not promoting me. Right. It's promoting the music and the people that make it. And the music, and my vision and goal is to pursue and, if you will, reward exceptional music. Because right. there is a lot of exceptional music being made in bluegrass. There's a lot of average music, people playing the local bars, and that's great. But we're trying to highlight what is marvelous about bluegrass. Do you feel a sense of responsibility, though? Because I'm starting to. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, but what about vacation then? When you take off, there is no vacation. You can't do that. It kind of changes the whole uh, speed of how things are rolling all together. You remember the. You, you remember the uh, commercials, and this has got to have been back in the 80s. I think it was Dunkin' Donuts had a commercial with this guy, this dour, you know, waking up in the morning, I've got to make the donuts. You remember those? Yeah, I do. And that was the bit that, you know, our donuts are fresh every day because this poor guy's got to wake up at 4 a.m. and go yeah. make the donuts. And, and that's kind of the way running a website is because what people like is that it's new every day. So um, when I go on vacation, I still write the stories. Yeah, you know, my son lives up in Boston. I visit him as often as I can, but you know. You bring your laptop. I bring the you. laptop. Yeah. Yeah. And I can work anywhere. Well, thanks for, uh, for what you do, because well, it really, it helps uh, someone like myself who wants to be, you know, part of the fabric of the scene mm -hmm. and it allows me to know what's going on and uh, and it does introduce me to uh, bands that weren't on my radar right you know and that that's I think is the coolest part that, is that it is for me too when yeah. I discover I shouldn't say discover but when I learn about something that I hadn't known about I'm excited that and IBMA is loaded with that that's Absolutely. my favorite yeah oh no yeah. question I've seen some things this week that you know, yeah, you what, realize this is going to be uh, the next What's the thing. band that, that's on your... Uh... Appalachian Roadshow is the yeah. coolest thing I've seen this yeah. whole week. And it's it's very unique and distinctive. And, it is, and yeah. it's based on excellence. Yeah. Right? That what they're doing is virtuosic as well as entertaining and educational. And yeah, they get yeah. it. And... Uh, and they have some uh, experience. Yes. They, well, they been, do. They've, they've been they've through been this industry it, yeah. since they were kids, most of them. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think they're very special. I think Alex Leach is going to be special. Right. I mean, he's already special, but, you know, now he's got his own band. So, uh, and I saw Alan Bobby in Grasstown. That's as professional and almost perfect a bluegrass band as exists right now. Uh, yeah, and that that's the beauty of uh, IBMA is you... You could clone yourself and, <laughs> and five times over it. and not see just no, the no uh, showcases uh, on the ramble alone. And yes. Stuff. Well, okay, man. Thanks for talking to me. Right, and it's been a good pleasure. All right. Absolutely. Thanks.